Are you in the market for the best used car? Well, the first and second generation Ford Focus might be the car for you. With 20 years in the automotive industry, I can help you cut through the research and find a quality used car that's right for you. Too many people buy on just looks or price alone. But by the end of this video, I will have given you enough information to make an informed decision on whether or not the first generation Ford Focus is the best car for you. And if you watch till the end of the video, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to enter a giveaway on this channel. So stay tuned. So in today's video, I wanna know from you if the uh, first slash second generation Ford Focus is the best used car ever. Yeah, so we've done a ton of is this the best used car video. And today we wanna to find out if the uh, Ford Focus is the best used car. Is it better than the Chevy Cruze? Dodge Avenger? Ford Fusion? Is it better than the Crown Vic? Or Canada's number one selling minivan, the Dodge Grand Caravan? And the reason why I mention those, bud, is because I've done videos on every single one of them. And I have asked that question. A lot of you guys have a lot of different comments down in the comment section below of each of those videos, uh, bragging or ripping on any of those cars. So today we're doing the Ford Focus, and the reason why is because I bought myself a winter beater. And if you don't know what a winter beater is, well, in this neck of the woods up here in Canada, uh, a winter beater is something that you buy that's likely a rot box, rotted out, rocker panels are gone, inspections almost due, and maybe a little bit clapped out, like this 2010 Ford Focus. So let's take a walk around this car, we'll take a look at some of the creature comforts and some of the things it does or doesn't have, and then we'll get into talking about some of the things that are good and some of the things that are bad. Get it up in the air, we'll check it out underneath and see some of the common rust areas, because up here in Canada, you gotta be concerned about rust, and you gotta know where to look. So uh, let's take a look at this one, 2010, see what she's got. Well, clearly you can see that this thing is part Buick and part Transformer. Uh, it's got the porthole stickers here on the side to make it look classy. Uh, but it's also got the uh, Transformers sticker in the front windshield. So you know that this thing turns from a Ford Focus uh, into a fighting destruction shoebox, toaster. I don't know. It is just an S model, so it doesn't have the uh, fog lights. It doesn't have the uh, aluminum wheels. It's just got the 15-inch tires. Uh, we come around to the back, uh, and virtually no badging. We do see uh, another transformer. I mean, it verifies it right there. Um, single exhaust on these little four cylinders, and we come around to this side, and we can tell this car was meant for me uh, because we're fighting that gas gauge uh, on the sticker of the gas cover there. Um, we come around, it does not have the chrome handles. You don't get that on the S models. It just get the, the black. Uh, and same thing with the mirrors. Some of these mirrors came, I think, either with chrome or maybe color match. Again, we've got portholes here on the side of the fender. And the classic fogging of the uh, headlight assembly from being out in the sun too long. Again, another clue to tell you that this car was probably meant for me because just like a ginger, if you're out in the sun too long, you get baked. So in New Brunswick, we got two year inspections. This one was inspected two years ago in October. So on the last day of October, Halloween, the inspection runs out and folks, she's not gonna pass. And it's not for what you might think. This thing looks good from a distance, but when we get underneath of it, you'll see. Let's go inside. So in the back seat, it's got the classy seat covers here. Uh, they, they uh, yeah, they're there, uh, but the seats, uh, got this in indestructible fabric. They're pretty good. Uh, they do get dirty easy, uh, but front and back seats are in really good shape. Not really sure why uh, the previous owner decided he was going to put this on. Maybe for the same reasons he put the portholes on. We come inside and we see crank windows, bud, and uh, power locks. Manual adjusting mirrors. Crank windows, you just don't see that anymore. We've got manual adjustments on the seats. We've got a door dinger that won't stop dinging, and yes, the lights are off. Three pedals on the floor, a stick shift in the middle. And I've got to start this thing to keep it from dinging. So 
So this thing's got 198,416 kilometers. Which works out to roughly about 124,000 miles. Yet, the only warning light that it's got on the dash is for tire pressure. Clearly all four tires are holding wind. But she's got a couple of cup holders here. The parking brake does hold. Uh, it's got a little change pocket down here for your loonies and your toonies. A couple of 12 volt power outlets and an auxiliary. One thing I don't get about Ford and some other basic radios is they still give you the telephone button right here. Uh, but when you press the button, it comes up and tells you no phone. But yes, because it doesn't have Ford Microsoft Sync, you, you, you can't you can't power your phone to the to the radio boys does have a cd player am fm ac however the ac only blows hot we're going to check into that and see what's going on with that map lights mirrors for driver and passenger and a custom rear view mirror adjustment over here it had a steering wheel cover on it to match the seats i quickly deleted that option Got a nice armrest and the seats are quite comfortable uh i've said before in multiple videos i'm six foot two i can get in this car and fit myself very comfortably and uh, i don't feel like i'm in a sardine can however i would not want to be sitting in the back seat and under the hood we've got ford's indestructible two liter engine complete with security system as we get in here, a couple of things that I want to point out are common for these engines. One, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but if I hold this down to that line, you might be able to see it shaking. Motor mounts were common to go bad on these Ford Focuses, and these things would shake like Grandma Jenny trying to sip on her hot tea. Another common thing that I'll show you under the hood here is a common rust area. Right down there on the strut mount and where that piece seams together with the top of the strut tower, that was common for those to rust. If you live in the rust belt like we do here, keep an eye on those, keep them sprayed down with some undercoating or else an adventure with a pothole will become an adventure with holes through the hood. And again, just like 90% of everything that comes into Canada or at least here in the East Coast, rocker panels were common for these things to rot out. However, it was more common to lose part of your floor on the inside of your rocker panel as well. And we'll show you what this one looks like because it ain't no different. If you're new to my channel and you're just joining me now and you live in Canada or the East Coast, make sure you're undercoating your vehicle every year. That way you don't have to be replacing it every five years in my opinion these first ford focuses were very good cars mechanically didn't give too much issue so a classic example of a beater that's a really good car besides the rust problems that it has and the only reason why i bought that ford focus was because i've already got me a parts car 16 inch wheels with good tires granted this one has to come to the rot take a look at that all the way through so to overcome my lack of cruise control and no satellite radio or bluetooth i might be able to steal the radio out of this one and if you want to know how bad the rust gets on these cars from the trunk you can look down in through this pillar here and see daylight but look how bad that is And if you don't like the seat covers or the light gray seats, maybe we can switch it to black. So let's get this thing in on the lift. Maybe we can lift it, maybe we can't. I don't know how bad the rust is for sure. Let's go and we'll take a look. Now up here in the front, the rocker panels look like they're original, but they should hold the hoist arm. And we're gonna lift it right there. And in the rear, it looks like it should hold a hoist arm. So let's try her out. I don't know. 
On this side, it looks a little more questionable. We'll try her. And it looks like somebody already tried there once. We'll move her up a little bit. And now we listen for crunching. Can't be too bad. So while we've got it on the hoist, I'm going to check it over for safety, making sure everything's okay. And already we got a clunking, which I knew there was a clunk. Didn't know what it is. Let's take a look. So I think it's that tie rod right there. On this side, there's no play. So another common area that uh, you'll be able to see it is the rear quarter panels. This one here is not doing very good. Up in here is where you want to be able to see. They've got this little piece of plastic that kind of protects your parking brakes, but uh, crap can get up in there and hold. Uh, we've got a little bit of a rust issue going on right in here because there's a drain hole there and it will hold stuff if it gets plugged. We got factory seam sealer here coming all the way down. It looks like someone's put some goop here once before. Um, but she's getting a little bit soft. Oh, yeah, see right there? She's getting a little bit soft. So that's going to have to be fixed before she gets another inspection. Only a little bit of glue. Look, they had her gobbed all the way in there, filling holes is what they were doing. And remember what I said earlier is the rocker panels will eat their way into the floor. Well, this is exactly what I was talking about right here. So we come up here, uh, that rocker panel has been repaired once before and all they did was put a piece of tin over it and uh, did, did, they didn't fix anything. They left all the rotten metal right there. Uh, subframes, you gotta pay attention to your subframes because these will rust, they'll get holes in them. Uh, up in here where the brake lines and the fuel line are, uh, will hold dirt. This one actually looks pretty good. Um, and as we come up here further, the rad support, keep an eye on that because that will get rusty as well. Now this engine looks like it's got paint markings on it, which means it's probably been replaced once before. And even though I said these things were bulletproof, well, nothing is bulletproof if you don't maintain them. Caliper is a little stiff on this side. I can hardly turn that wheel. But as we come over here, uh, we got more holes on this side. And the same hole we had on the other side over there that was holding stuff. This one was holding as well. And we'll have to put a little patch in there. Rear subframes, this part is stamped. So you want to make sure you're checking on that. Uh, this one's a little bit scaly, but from what I can tell, it's pretty solid. And the floors all look good, even though they're brown. Not much to worry about here. And on this side, the passenger side, or the, sorry, the driver's side rear floor, someone's put a patch in there once upon a time. So as we check on the AC, because it was a common problem on these things for the AC to go bad, um, just we're going to check it to see if it actually holds a vacuum. I'm guessing it likely won't. Uh, there it is right now. But another common problem on these things were wheel bearings. And they weren't the bolt-in ones. They were the pull the hub off, press out the old bearing, press the new bearing in. About a two-hour process if you're paying for it. Costs you a couple hundred bucks plus the bearing. Uh, but if you're doing it yourself, you probably need a shop press. And thankfully, at the moment, this one doesn't have any bad wheel bearings. Now we did do the vacuum test on this thing. We let it set for about a half an hour and uh, the gauge did not move. So it could just be low. So let's, uh, let's charge it up and see if she's gonna work. AC's charged, she's blowing cold boys because she's getting pretty warm here. She's about 22 degrees today. She's gonna get up to about 25. And even though it's still September, our days get pretty warm. Granted, we're still running the defroster in the mornings. So now that she's cooling off, let's take her for a rip there, bud.
something I can live without, but it's not the end of the world. As we get out and drive this thing, a couple of things that you need to know is that it's a compact car and it's meant to be a entry level car, subcompact. Something you're probably gonna get about 35 miles to the gallon with, but if you're cruising down the highway, it's only gonna cost you pennies on the dollar compared to that Chevy pickup that I drive or the big Suburban. But as far as comfort, like I mentioned before, six foot two, I feel comfortable. In fact, I have to pull the seat forward in order to drive it, get that clutch in all the way because if it's all the way back, it's too far back. That's how much room there is. Headroom, yep, lots of headroom. As far as creature comforts, this one's a little bit stripped down. So you don't have collision avoidance. You don't have Bluetooth, unfortunately, and you don't have cruise control or heated seats, backup camera, stuff like that. But this is a perfect vehicle for somebody who's looking for a third, a second or third vehicle for a son or daughter, uh, or something to commute back and forth to work with. You can count on a first to second gen Ford Focus to be a reliable car, assuming you can get away from the rust. So is the first and second gen Ford Focus the best used car on the market? Well, maybe not modern car, but I believe that it's right up there with the Ford Fusion and the Toyota Corolla that if you can find one in good shape, boys, you better be jumping on her because uh, they are really, really good cars for that second or third vehicle in the family. And I wanna know down in the comment section down below if you think these Ford Focuses are the best used car on the market. Let me know. If you're watching this video in September of 2024, you've got three weeks left to make a purchase at oldcarguy.com and you can be entered in to win a big giveaway. If you wanna see what's in that giveaway, I'm gonna leave a link right up here and at the end screen so you can see what this giveaway is all about and what's involved and how to enter. So make sure you're supporting Old Car Guy in more ways than just watching these videos. Pick yourself up this college tee, we've got the Got Gas tee, we've got all kinds of different t-shirts, hoodies, hats, beer koozies, stickers, help support the channel so we can continue working on some great projects like the Turbo LS Suburban. I stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you. God bless. Let's do her again the next one, bud.